I'll take this veritable inferno of blazing splint and place it this way into this woman's jacket with absolutely no damage whatsoever to the cigarette. <laughs> Are you watching me? I'm only going to do this once. No more stalling. This one. You know what's interesting about this part of my act? How graphically it illustrates how each of us is able to find humor in the misfortunes of others. <laughs> it's damned amusing if it's not your jacket, isn't it? <laughs> Slightly less so if it is. All right, no more stalling. This way, into the jacket. The, the illusion is so strong, it looks like smoke is kind of... <laughs> There should be no doubt in his mind, I'm working a veritable inferno of blazing splint. You've seen the cigarette under the jacket, yet one slight tug and it vanishes. And if this isn't time for thunderous applause, I don't know what else! <laughs> a hand for my assistant, Chris! <laughs> Could you hear what she said? Did you hear what she said? She said how did you do that? <laughs> do you want to know how I did that? Yes. <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> but I can't tell you that because it's... Yes. No, it's a secret. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you people, huh? It's a trick? How many of you would like me to teach you how to do some extraordinary magical effect? Hey. Would you like that? Hey. All right. I'm going to teach you something. You're going to be able to go home and perform yourselves and fool all your friends. It's going to be wonderful, actually. Now, I just want to say, before we do this, I want you to get the right idea. This is an extraordinary effect, but very simple. Do not discount it because of that. You have a brightly colored handkerchief like this that you pull through your hand a couple of times like so. Then you begin to tuck it into your hand in this manner. While you're doing this, you can talk about what a great magician you are and all the great magic stuff you're going to do. Now, you take a handful of magic dust. <laughs> Sprinkle it over your hand. The handkerchief disappears and changes to an egg. Hey. Pretty nice, huh? All right. Let me ask you, by applause, how many people think they might know how this is done? All right. How many people would like me to show you exactly, step by step, how to do it? Hey. I told you I would, and God knows this is more than David Copperfield would ever do for you. It's actually quite simple. You see, the handkerchief is actually inside. They do, everyone, ah, that's the sound of being smart. <laughs> Much better than the sound of being dumb. <laughs> eh? Can you see? There's a hole in the egg, hollow egg. I don't know, can you see all the way back? This is just a plastic Easter egg I cut a hole in with an X-Acto knife. You people in this audience, a lot of you must have kids. Yes? Yeah. You must, they must have things. They must have toys you could take. A, you could even probably just take a plastic, a white plastic ball, and no one would know the difference either. But so you get this, you cut a hole in it. That's all it is. That's all you're dealing with here. And then also, very, very important, get a brightly colored handkerchief. Now, you could use any color you like. I use red because I think it catches your eye better. But the whole point is, when you're using this, you hold the handkerchief out here to attract their attention. You hold the egg in a very relaxed, natural grip in this hand. <laughs> That's why you wave the handkerchief around over here. Hopefully it will distract them from the palsied claw over here. All right. Then you're waving this around. You're talking about what a great magician you are. You say, I'm going to take this handkerchief and stick it into my hand. But where are you really sticking it? Yeah. Exactly. Just checking. Last show, last night, audience very confused. <laughs> Just trying to, so you're sticking in the egg. They don't know there's a whole thing. You're talking about what a great magician you are. You learned everything David Blaine ever taught you. You're going on and on about this. As you're doing this, you're pattering is what we, professionally we call it. You stick this in. Now we come to a very important part of this effect. Once you've stuck the handkerchief all the way in the egg, you take a sprinkling of magic dust. Now, I hope everyone understands there is no magic dust. <laughs> 
It just makes it look more magical when you do this. Damn. <laughs> there is always someone who's disappointed in the crowd, sir. I understand. I'm just trying to do it step by step so you understand what we're doing here. No, no, it's all right. I understand. There's nothing wrong. With it. Then you say, you say the handkerchief has changed to an egg. Now, when you do this, do not show this side of the egg. All right. Because if you do, it becomes what we call technically a non-miracle. Right. But if that happens, don't panic. Don't panic. Do what I do. No, ma'am. Peel the dot out. Like this. And then, do this. Did you ever see the movie Rocky, sir? Dun, 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 dun. Um, let me tell you something. The world's greatest stage manager has a towel here for me. Thank you so much. Leave it hand you that. What an extraordinary man. A thunderous round of applause for the stage crew. Please. Oh. Unbelievable. Thank you very, very much. Now, you know, I know some of you felt, oh, we thought you were really going to teach us how to do some magic trick. Well, I am. Okay. I'm not about to leave you disheartened that way. I'm about to teach one of you how easy it is to become an accomplished professional magician like myself. Perhaps you, sir, would be so kind as to assist me? Come up here to thunderous applause. Come on up here. Great. And that's right what I want. Great. Ah! Whoa! Careful. We're not insured. Thanks for coming up here, sir. Thanks for having me. What's your name? Dale. Dale, thanks for joining me. Dale, you're enjoying the show? Absolutely. Oh, good. I think I can put a stop to that. Oh. Dale, let me show you what I've got here. I've got a deck of cards. I want to show them to you and to the audience so okay. that you can see that each one is different and they are fairly well mixed. You can ascertain that to your satisfaction, can you not? Absolutely. I don't know if you can see all the way in back, but each one is different. They are fairly well mixed. Now, what I'm going to do, Dale, I'm going to run the cards from one hand to the other. I want you to simply reach out and touch the back of any card as they go from hand to hand. This card here. Yes, sir. Yes, I want sir. you to take it, but don't let anyone see it. As a matter of fact, hide it in one of your pockets, Dale, so that no one could possibly know what card that is. I won't even turn around until you tell me the card is hidden. Okay, it's hidden. It's hidden. I can turn around now and I won't see it? Absolutely. Oh, good. Was I supposed to look at it? Dale, you take me too literally. <laughs> I meant no one but you should see it. <laughs> but what an honest guy, huh? I say no one should see it. He says, God knows I can't be trusted. <laughs> Dale, have you looked at it and hidden it again? Absolutely. So now I can turn around and I won't see it? Yes, sir. Okay. So you're the only person who's seen the car. Right. So you're the only person who has possession of the car. Correct. Dale, under these stringent test conditions, <laughs> if I were to guess what card that was and tell them, that'd be a fairly impressive trick, would it not? Absolutely it would. Damn right it would be. <laughs> But it would just be kid stuff compared with what we're about to do. Oh. Dale, you are about to transmit a mental <laughs> picture of the card you selected okay. to every single member of the audience here. Okay. <laughs> By God, I like your style, Dale. I salute you, sir. This guy's the real deal. Now, Dale. Yeah. Dale. Let me just check. Let me just check because Dale has that. I was going to say joie de vivre, but maybe, maybe oomph is better. Dale has that tremendous positive attitude. Let me just check. Now, no guessing. Did anybody get the impression of the card? All right, no, no, that doesn't mean you did it wrong. Uh, okay. It just means it's your first time as a famous magician. Right. I should let you use a piece of uh, professional equipment to okay. make it easier. Now, I know, I know, it's using a prop. But even still, it's a very impressive effect, a mental thought transmission, even if we're using a sophisticated piece of machinery. Don't you agree? Magical equipment. Exactly. Right. Let me just let me get this. No, no, it's not what it looks like. 
This is the little wonder. <laughs> Folks. <laughs> Folks, I'm just going to let you write your own punchline, all right? Because the one that's occurring to me will pretty much get me fired and him thrown out. Okay. So, no, it's the little wonder double oscillating thought transference device. Okay. You can see the double oscillation action here, uh, Dale. It's very, it, yeah. You see, when the apex here mm -hmm. is pressed forehead, <laughs> and the handle is turned, it actually transmits a mental picture to any living being that may be in its path. So now, Dale, take the little wonder. Press the apex against your forehead from which all thoughts emanate. Okay, okay. Now, concentrate on the card you selected. Right yes, that here. part there, yeah. Okay. Concentrate on the card as you turn the handle okay. and scan the audience from side. Just, no, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> when you turn the handle that way, Dale, you draw thoughts in. Okay. The other way, it's my fault, I'm okay. sorry. The other way, so you're transmitting out. Take it, Dale. All right, here we go. All right. That's it, yes! Yes! It's stuck. Dale, let me see this. It's working now. Okay. All right. All right. I think my finger was in the Well, I understand. It's, it's a scientific piece of equipment, Dale, you know. Okay. This is not a toy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Try again. All right, here we go. That's it, yes! Do it, baby. You know what, Dale? You're doing very, very well. Am I doing well? But sometimes with an audience like this, it helps yeah. if you can induce an atonal reverberation in the upper cranial cavity. Maybe you're to go. Folks, I don't make the rules. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what, Dale, I'm gonna give you this microphone for amplification. No, I, no, no, no. I'll, I'll even raise it to an adult height. Here you go, now. I want you people to give Dale your full attention. This is not easy to do. Dale, I want you to step up to the microphone, press the little wonder double oscillating thought transference device against your forehead. I want you to turn the handle as you scan the audience from side to side as you say, Whee! I know we'll be successful if you people give Dale half a chance. All right, Dale, up to the mic. All right, everyone, concentrate now. Concentrate and. <clears throat> All right. I think he's ready. Take it, Dale. What's the sound again? You know what that sound is, Dale. Wait, start on this side, start on this side. Yeah, going that way, all right, and transmit. Good, 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 all right. By God, give me this before you scramble your brains, Dale, all right. I'm gonna take a chance. This may not work. Call me irresponsible. I'm gonna count to three. On the count of three, if anyone received any sort of mental impression whatsoever. <laughs> I want you then to just shout it to Dale. Dale, take the card out of your pocket now and concentrate on it. Okay. Don't let anyone see it, but concentrate. Okay. Is everybody ready? Ready. One, two, three! Two Dale, let me see what card. Ladies and gentlemen, the thunderous applause.